Welcome to Lesson 9, Aerodynamics. In this lesson, we will discuss the aerodynamic forces affecting an aircraft, including the four forces of flight and stability about the three axes. It is not all-inclusive of everything we will need to know about aerodynamics in this course. Additional information can be found in the Aviation Maintenance Technician Journal Handbook, FAA-H-8083-30. There are four main forces affecting an aircraft in flight. Thrust, drag, lift, and weight. Where thrust opposes drag and lift opposes weight. For an aircraft to accelerate, thrust must be greater than drag, and to decelerate, drag must exceed thrust. For an aircraft to climb or gain altitude, lift must exceed weight, and to descend, weight must be greater than lift. To overcome the weight force, airplanes generate an opposing force called a lift. Lift is generated by the motion of the airplane through the air and is an aerodynamic force. Most of the lift is generated by the wings. Weight is a force that is always directed towards the center of the earth. The magnitude of the weight depends upon the mass of the airplane plus the amount of fuel plus any payload on board that includes people, baggage, freight, etc. The weight is distributed throughout the airplane, but we can often think of it as collected and acting through a single point called the center of gravity. In flight, the airplane rotates about the center of gravity. During a flight, an airplane's weight constantly changes as the aircraft consumes fuel. The distribution of the weight and the center of gravity also changes, so the pilot must constantly adjust the controls to keep the air crane balanced or trimmed. Thrust is a forward acting force that drives the airplane through the air. It is a product of the propeller or turbine engine and opposes drag. As the airplane moves through the air, there is another aerodynamic force present. The air resists the motion of the aircraft and the resistance force is called drag. Drag is due to friction of air flowing over the airframe. Drag is opposed to thrust. The wing cord is the distance between the front or leading edge of the wing and the back or trailing edge. In a tapered wing, the cord varies along the length of the wing, in which case we usually refer to it as the mean aerodynamic cord. The camber of the wing is the curvature of the top and bottom of the wing. The top of the wing generally has more camber to aid in the generation of lift. The mean camber is the difference in the distance between the upper and lower camber relative to the cord line. Bernoulli's principle accounts for some portion of the lift generated by an aircraft wing. As the wing is forced through the air, the air flowing over the upper, more highly cambered portion must increase in velocity to keep up with the air flowing under the wing. This is due to the air flowing over the top of the wing having to travel a greater distance due to the upper camber. This increase in velocity results in a decrease in pressure. The relative higher pressure beneath the wing acts to force the wing upward. Newton's third law states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Air flowing beneath a wing is deflected downward and air flowing over the top of the wing is pulled downward. This action of the air being forced downward has the opposite reaction of forcing the wing upward, which accounts for a considerable portion of lift.
The angle of incidence is the angle between the cord line of the wing and the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. The angle of incidence is constant and does not change for an aircraft. The angle of attack is the angle between the cord line of the wing and the relative wind. As the angle of attack increases, the lift generated by the wing increases up until the point where the airflow over the wing becomes disturbed and lift falls off. A stall is a rapid decrease in lift caused by the separation of airflow from the wing's surface brought on by exceeding the critical angle of attack. A stall can occur at any pitch attitude or airspeed. The critical angle of attack is the angle of attack at which a wing stalls regardless of airspeed, flight attitude, or weight. Stall trips are spoilers attached to the inboard leading edge of some wings to cause the center section of the wing to stall before the tips. This assures lateral control throughout the stall. A wing will stall when its angle of attack reaches a certain angle relative to its direction of flight. The aspect ratio is the ratio between the wingspan, or distance from one wing tip to the other, and the wing cord. Generally, the higher the aspect ratio, the greater the lifting efficiency. Dihedral is the angle between the aircraft's wing and the horizon. Dihedral aids in lateral stability by generating more vertical lift on a wing as it dips to the horizontal, acting to raise that wing, and less vertical lift on the upward moving wing, acting to lower it. Low wing aircraft have a higher center of gravity and therefore require more dihedral. High wing aircraft with their lower center of gravity require less dihedral. Directional stability of an aircraft is aided by the vertical stabilizer, which acts as a weather vane to align the aircraft with the relative wind. Trim tabs, such as the elevator trim tab seen here to the left, help reduce pilot workload by reducing the pressure needed to be applied to maintain a specific attitude, heading, or bank angle. This is accomplished by controlling the small trim tab from within the cockpit, which in turn controls a larger control surface. The load factor is the ratio of the amount of load supported by the aircraft's wings to the weight of the aircraft and its contents. It is usually expressed in units of gravity. Here you can see an example of wingtip vortices trailing behind an aircraft during landing. Wingtip vortices are caused by the higher air pressure below the wing flowing over the wingtip and then inboard along the top of the wing. They create additional drag and a hazard to smaller aircraft behind them. Wingtip vortices are most pronounced among larger jets flying at lower speeds with high lift coefficients such as when taking off or landing. Pictured here are winglets on an aircraft utilized to reduce wingtip vortices. Winglets improve the efficiency of an aircraft wing by smoothing the airflow across the upper wing near the tip and reducing the lift-induced drag caused by wingtip vortices, improving the lift-to-drag ratio. This increases fuel efficiency, speed, range, and payload, 
and by reducing wingtip vortices, they also reduce the hazards associated to them for trailing aircraft. In fixed wing aircraft, lift is generated by the wings and thrust is produced by the power plants and is generally parallel to the direction of flight. In a helicopter or rotorcraft, however, lift and thrust are both produced by the rotor blades. This allows the helicopter to move forward, sideways, backwards, up and down to get in and out of smaller places than a fixed wing aircraft can and perform duties and tasks that a fixed wing aircraft cannot. The main parts of a helicopter include the main rotor, the tail rotor, the cockpit, landing gear, tail boom, and the engine and transmission. The three main classifications of helicopter rotors are number one, the fully articulated rotor, which has multiple hinges allowing the blades to move up and down and fore and aft, typically used with aircraft with three or more rotor blades. Number two, the semi-rigid rotor blades, which are rigidly attached to the hub, allowing the blades to teeter like a seesaw, with one blade moving up while the other moves down. These are utilized in two rotor blade systems. And the rigid rotor blade, which must be strong and flexible to allow them to bend without the need for hinges or teetering hubs. As the main rotors rotate in one direction, the equal and opposite reaction described by Newton wants to rotate the cabin in the opposite direction. The anti-torque systems are designed to counter this tendency. There are three main types of anti-torque systems. In the first, the tail rotor is a spinning set of blades on the end of a tail boom creating a force to counter the rotation of the helicopter. The fenstrum where the tail rotor blades are encased in a shroud to reduce drag and hazards to ground personnel. The NOTAR, or no tail rotor, counters the helicopter rotation primarily by creating a lower relative pressure on one side of the boom, acting to rotate the boom in that direction, and secondly, by forcing air through a nozzle to create an additional force to counter rotation. Control of the anti-torque system allows control around the vertical axis of the helicopter. There are two primary pitch controls in a helicopter. The collective pitch control changes the rotor blade angle, which along with the throttle controls lift. The cyclic pitch lever controls the direction of flight by altering the blade angle during particular segments of its rotation. Push forward on the cyclic to move forward, pull back to back up, and move left and right to bank left and right. 